All right, last session for the day. Everyone still awake and energized? Okay, great. Let's go ahead. How do you reduce risk at your tank terminal? We are Falker and stand for digital inspection of your terminal assets. We ensure risk reduction using three steps. First, we scan your terminal with our drones, sensors, and apps to collect an enormous, consistent amount of data. That data goes to our software platform, where it is compared with the terminal's digital twin. In no time, this creates a rapid view of risk at your terminal assets. So we know what damage there is, the extent of it, and the exact location. In the last step, we evaluate the deficiency and quickly dispatch maintenance engineers to plan repairs on the damage. Our digital services ensure total control of your asset integrity and supports EMUA or API compliant evaluation. We make asset risk assessments safer, more reliable, and more efficient. All right, so um, an asset integrity software platform like many are out there in the market. Uh, what's the big difference? Uh, we provide a software platform where the owner of the software platform is the asset owner. And we provide interfaces to many robotic suppliers, sensor suppliers, uh, drone um, uh, workflows, but also the ability to do traditional inspection on site using tablets or even paperwork or importing PDF. So it's like a hybrid solution where you collect all your inspection data to come together in one platform and manage your inspection workflow and your maintenance scoping workflow. Um, so today I'm going to talk about robotics and data digitalization. Uh, and about storage tanks digital twins, so how we combine this. Uh, we have a, a booth at uh, H12 uh, uh, showing a drone robotic system. So for us, this is a new age. So we spent the last five years digitizing the whole inspection process. Uh, started using drones for that as well. Um, because in the end, the challenge is that many of the assets are, you know, 40, 50 years old, uh, not being replaced, lifetime extension. A lot of more inspection effort is expected for the coming uh, two decades. Um, uh, but many people will retire with, you know, knowledge about these inspections. And it's a, a, a supply chain problem that we are solving. So. What we do is we digitize the whole terminal, we digitize all the tanks, create digital twins based on that, and then start doing inspection from behind the software platform instead of physically having to go on site. This is much more efficient, and that means that your competent inspectors can work online, not having to go on site, um, which of course increases the efficiency and also safety for them. Now, the last five years, we, uh, uh, we went on site with customers. We are currently doing around 10% of the storage tanks in the Rotterdam Harbor for visual inspection, geometrical inspection, gas emission inspection, and um, so now the inspectors didn't have to go on site anymore, but my pilots had to go on site. So that wasn't really solving any efficiency problem there. Um, you know, we could do it cost effectively, 
but still it was hard to, to really create an efficient workflow. And on site of that, in the Netherlands, the weather is very volatile. So, you know, last week we were sunbathing and this week it's raining and windy. Um, so in the end, we were searching for options to automatically collect all that visual data. And we found this in uh, uh, drone robotics systems. Um, All right, so five years back, we started doing, using the first drones for visual inspection. We uh, still had to uh, manually uh, fly them. Uh, a lot of work uh, required a lot of concentration from the pilots, uh, and in the end, things went wrong as well, because it's very hard to visually you know, see where the drone exactly is flying in regards to the object that you are inspecting. Um, so we went to motion patterns, you know, flying around tanks or taking uh, photogrammetry, survey flights, uh, things like that, you know. If you've ever flown a drone, then you, uh, uh, you've seen this uh, standard DJI flight patterns. But in the end, uh, that still was not efficient enough. So we made the step to fully automate the flight pattern. So the pilot, we were not, no longer depending on the quality of the pilot. Uh, his role was to change batteries, to land and to uh, uh, take off again, uh, and that's it. And then to move the drone from one asset to, to the other, but the software would do the complete flying. Um, we also wanted to be able to not fly visual line of sight, but also extended visual line of sight, meaning you have another person standing behind a tank, pilot on the other side, and that you know, because otherwise the pilot constantly has to walk around the tank. And that's good for your health, but it's not very efficient again. Um, in the end, we started in 2019 because we wanted to fly, as they call it, BV loss, which means beyond visual line of sight. And beyond visual line of sight means that there is no pilot required on site anymore to fly the drone. The drone lives in a box. Is, has, is in a housing, uh, has a climate control, is charging, and then when you need it, you just remotely log in, press play, and it will take off, do its mission, return to its box again, land, box closes, drones start charging again, data is uploaded to the cloud. Now this is the workflow that we always wanted to accomplish and the, uh, the technology was already there in 2019, but the permitting was a whole different thing. Uh, we spent three years getting the right permits, and the good news is we got them. Since last month, uh, we finally received authorization under the EU uh, new drone laws, and we can now roll it out throughout uh, uh, the Rotterdam Harbor, but also all the other industrial places in, uh, in Europe. All right, so that means from drone data acquisition perspective, that opens up a whole new world. It's a whole new paradigm, if you will, because the drone is always present on the terminal. You can have it up in the air within five minutes after you want it. So you don't have to plan your team, you don't have any logistical hazards, work permits, uh, you come there, the wind is not good, or. Um, uh, you can just have your drone up in the air within five minutes, and that opens up a whole new spectrum of possibilities. Also, the drone doesn't necessarily have to be operated by a pilot or a certified pilot. It can also be operated by a terminal operator or by a security uh, uh, person. Um, so our ball game was the visual inspection, uh, but we're also looking at now the... Uh, uh, the, the uh, corrosion under isolation, uh, hotspot recognition with the thermal camera. Um, we already did, did gas emission localization using OGI cameras. Now the drone box comes with an OGI camera this year, uh, already announced. Of course, the surveillance use case comes uh, 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 in scope. You know, uh, uh, security uh, uh, personnel 
if they see something on a camera and they have blind spots, they can just click on a Google map, drone goes up, flies there, and you have thermal and you have visual, so you can even see anything at night. If it sees uh, sus uh, suspected people or a car, it can just click on the car and it will follow it as long as it's in, on your terrain. Um, if fire alarms go off, you know, the drone can just respond to that, go directly uh, to the place, turn on its thermal camera, and you can see if there's a, uh, a, a real fire or are there maybe people on the line on the ground. Uh, same with gas alarms, of course. Um, in the Netherlands, because of the climate change, we have very heavy rainfall sometimes, uh, which causes drainage problems, which causes sometimes oil spills on your floating roofs. You know, just after the last raindrop fell, you have your eye in the sky up in the air and you can just check your whole terminal from above. Um, if you have uh, construction work or maintenance on a tank, you know, every day you can do a flyover, take the exact same pictures and you have your flip book and you can see your progress of the construction. You know, all types of use cases that now come into uh, scope that you initially never had when a drone team had to go on site. So, um, uh, lineup checks, you know, you have operators riding their bikes around the terminal doing lineup checks after product manipulations, or well, you can have them from the air. Uh, we can do AI on uh, product leaks as well, so you know within half an hour that you have a product leak on your lineup. Guys, what happens with the presentation? There we go. Sorry about that. So what does that mean, a BV loss permit? You know, what can you do with it and what can you not do with it? What are the kind of the restrictions to it? What are the possibilities? So we had our first BV loss permit allowing us to remotely operate a drone on site without having a pilot on site in November last year. That was above controlled ground area, which means you have a fence around it, you have a, a, a guard, you have, you know, uh, instructions before you went in, maybe a helmet on your head. Um, we could fly until 50 meters of altitude and uh, we could use a drone that weighed less than a kilo because of the kinetic energy when it accidentally falls on your head, you don't want to be dead. So. Uh, that was a big restriction because not many drones weighed less than a kilo. Um, and we could only fly it outside CDR. CDR is controlled ground area, near, so when you're near an airport and you have air traffic control, you're within CTR. So we could only fly it outside CDR. The, Rot the port of Rotterdam, uh, around half of it is at outside CDR and half of it is inside CDR. The switch point is near Vopac Europort, just a little beyond for those who know the area. Um, and we would fly like a very simple, pragmatic drone in a box, a wooden box with a, a draw in it, uh, carrying a Mavic, DJI Mavic Enterprise, weight less than a kilo, has thermal and visual, uh, to do the first experiment, experiments. And we did a, a pilot project at the Mass Flakta oil terminal at the end of the port, um, doing security surveillance use cases, inspection use cases, uh, all kinds of use cases to see you know, if the technology would work, if the permit would work, and if that, how we could put that to operation. Now, last month, we received the big BV loss uh, permit, allowing us to fly uh, an eight to nine kilo Percepto drone, which has a parachute, so same kinetic energy when it lands on your head accidentally. 
um, carrying a thermal camera, carrying an RGB camera, and coming out with an OGI camera, guest recognition camera, uh, before the end of the year. Um, outside CTR, we can fly it up to 30 meters above your construction, so we, we take the highest construction, put 30 meters above it, and this is the air layer where we can fly because we will not meet any manned traffic there. No helicopters, no airplanes expected within 30 meters altitude of your, uh, of your constructions. Um, inside CDR, we can fly up to 120 meters, even higher, although the air risk is higher, but we still have RT radio required to do so. This is for the coming two years. Currently, the Port of Rotterdam is implementing a UTM system, automated system for flight control for drone uh, flights, which means that within two years, we can throw away the RT set and we can just digitally register our flight. And then when we need to land, we automatically get a signal and the drone box needs to respond to that. Again, controlled ground area. As soon as you go outside your own area, it's not allowed anymore. So the Port of Rotterdam wanted to use it as well to do product leakages, for instance, in the harbor. It's not going to happen with BVLOS systems for now, maybe later. Now, this, uh, this is the system. Um, has a, a climate control on the back, a, a good housing. Uh, it's good that the housing, if snow falls on it, it opens up like that, so first the snow falls off, so the snow fa doesn't fall on the drone. Uh, a good way to do it. And then uh, uh, we put it on a trailer, but normally it would be on a fixed location on your site if you would uh, use it. If you want to come and see it, we have it here on the fair uh, at booth H12, and you can view it. So where do we go from here? For me, this is an exciting age because we've worked very hard for the last few years to get the drone boxes up and running. Now we have the permits, we have the technology, we are a certified reseller and installer and uh, uh, starting to deploy those in the, in the Netherlands. Um, uh, so this year we will deploy the first systems with our customers, existing customers. We will evaluate the operation and also the data quality, an important aspect because you know we're it's a conservative industry. We want to do it step by step. Um, we will uh, work together with the Port of Rotterdam on their UTM pilot in August. We will have the first UTM flights here in the harbor with five drone operators, um, and we will start training terminal operators outside the CTR where we don't are we're, where we're not required to have RT. Uh, radio with uh, uh, air traffic control. Um, the next year, uh, uh, by the end of the years, we will add OGI, gas recognition, to the workflow. Um, uh, there's also an uh, air mobility, uh, which is like a more flexible type of drone box, which is not fixed at the location, but you can put it on a pickup truck, but still BV loss. Uh, opens up new scenarios as well. Um, uh, for Falker, our, our software platform, the inspection platform, will integrate with all kinds of NDT robots. So for those of you who don't know, next week in uh, uh, the Rotterdam RDM terrain, you have the Sprint Robotics, Robotics Challenge. So all kinds of robotic supplies will come there and they will demonstrate their robots. So it's at the Delta Link training facility. Uh, they have pressure vessels, they have a storage tank, they have flare stacks, they have piping racks and everyone comes to demonstrate their robots to do UT measurement, floor scanning, visual recognition, guest recognition, all kinds of physical tasks, climbing up stairs. You know, it's going to be a great uh, road show. There's even this dynamic spot type of robot, which is ATEX compliant, so it's an interesting thing. You can register for that, even if you're non, not a Sprint Robotics member. Uh, you can come on Wednesday and see. So I uh, recommend that if you're into robotics. Um, we will also start training the terminal operators inside the CTR um, uh, for the time where we don't need radio connection with the uh, uh, air traffic control. Beyond, we will 
combine it with ground robots also for uh, planning. So the, the, the Percepto AIM system, the, the, the control system for flight planning is also ready and is already supporting uh, spot uh, to control the, the motions of spot and we'll add new ground robots to that as well. So ground robots, uh, sailing robots, diving robots, you know, I. I personally think that we will have a lot of robots coming in the next two decades on the, on the terminals because you know they're safer, they're more efficient, they're consistent, and they can work night and day without any trouble. Um, and many people will retire in the in the fossil industry in the coming two decades, so there's a need for it as well. Um, and they will also start performing physical tasks. Um, I'm sure uh, we already had some experience with painting robots on the tanks. Um, uh, but uh, cleaning robots, of course, so many other physical tasks will be added to the, to the scope as well. All right, I understand that the whole drone robotics thing is a new thing. Maybe a lot of questions about what you can do, what you cannot do. So uh, uh, either come to me after the presentation or maybe if people in the audience have questions. No? All right, yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, <coughs> thanks for the presentation, uh, Duco. Just um, <coughs> the Bivalos drones, um, they are still flown by a pilot, but remotely. Yeah, they're not following the fixed flight paths. And yeah, we, we can. Sorry about that. We can set up fixed flight paths, um, but you can also, as a non-pilot, just click on the map. The drone will fly there, and then you have an eye in the sky, and you can control the camera motion and the heading of the drone. So it's like having a camera above your terminal at any place where you want. So for non-pilots as well. Full anti-collision and that type of stuff is all in the Percepto uh, yeah. drones. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone, for... Uh,